Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm visiting the baking capitals of the world and covering the tastes, traditions and the recipes Look at that. of the world's best baking cities. I love coming into bakeries. From the historic streets of Palermo <laughs> to the multicultural city of San Francisco. Mm, that's lovely. Welcome to City Bakes. Chocolate con churros, an experience that will stay with me forever. This is called San Gines, and apparently it's the best chocolate in Madrid. And I love chocolate. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, uh, it's just buzzing. And everyone's really excited about getting chocolate. It's like the massive Willy Wonka factory. The chocolate is served piping hot with the churros, which is a deep fried dough, a bit like chew pastry. The smell of chocolate is intoxicated. Look at the size of the churros. It's massive it's like that. Nice. That chocolate is something else. Warm chocolate and deep fried dough. This must be a winner. It's spectacular. The silky, smoothest chocolate that you've ever had. And that's all these guys selling here. And it's absolutely rammed and it's queued about a mile down the road. I've just got to know how they make this now. Us bakers are an understanding bunch, so I'm sure they won't mind me having a nose behind the scenes. Hola. In the kitchens, I find the bakers pounding a simple mixture of salt, water and flour, and that's it. No butter and no eggs, but plenty of elbow grease. It's a strange mix. It's very, very hard. It is like a hot water crust pastry. Very difficult to work with. OK, he's putting on the, the piper now. Mixing the dough suddenly feels like the easy bit. <laughs> that looks difficult, if I'm honest. That looks really difficult. Jeez. Wow. OK. <laughs> this isn't like any piping bag I've ever used before. It's really weird. <laughs> it's really weird. It's like driving a bus that's burst all its tires. I mean, that's what the mints look like. Beautiful concentric circles going in. I think mine's a new one, to be honest. Um, I think it's probably going to sell quite well. The dough was certainly mixed to perfection. From the sublime to the ridiculous. Yeah. I like to call it puzzlement. I'm more used to being the judge, but now it's my turn to be judged. That's good, huh? <laughs> no offence taken. But never mind how it looks, how does it taste? It tastes beautiful. I don't know what he's talking about. He hasn't got a clue. It's beautiful. Try it. Try it. Might not look good, but it tastes amazing. <laughs> I'm going to have some more. I've loved my visit to San Ginés. The chocolate is delicious, and I'm happy to leave the churros to the experts. City Bakes sends me to the most beautiful places in the world, and this is one of them, Bergen in Norway. Normally, when you travel in Europe, you go to any city, this bakery is pretty much at any corner, but here in Bergen, I've had to travel to the edges of Bergen to find another bakery. Now, this chain 
is the biggest chain in Bergen. But what gets me is, it's so cold. I've got about eight layers on and I'm feeling it. My feet, my little pinkies, I can't feel. I feel like they're gonna snap off in a minute. Further around the bay is the warmth of Baker Brun. This family-run business does have a few branches around the city, but this is their newest. Hello, Gunnar. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, I'm Paul. Yeah, welcome nice to, to Baker Brun. I'm told the owner, Gunnar, can shed some light on the history of Bergen's baking. He too has lots of boller, but there's something else that's caught my eye. What is that cake at the back? We call them white ladies. White ladies? Yeah. What's, it, what's in that cake? A sponge, cream, jam, and covered with marchipan and decorated. This name of this white lady is special for Bergen. This sounds like a promising find. I can't, eat, I can't eat all that. Yeah, and that's for us too. The name comes from uh, Kaiser Wilhelm, who visited Bergen many times. It was back in the 1900s when the German Emperor Kaiser Wilhelm visited Norway and saw this cake. He thought it reminded him of a ghost of a white lady he had seen in the castle. But I ain't afraid of no ghosts. That is so nice. It's a really light sponge, actually, but you have the macaron, which is slightly chewy down at the bottom, so you've got cream, you've got jam, you've got sponge, you've got marzipan, you've got macaron, and it's much lighter than you think. That is delicious. I mean, really, really good. With a local cake this good, why isn't the city full of bakeries? In Bergen, 100 years ago, we have something between 50, 60 bakeries in, in Bergen. Bergen. In Bergen. Well, there isn't that many now. No, it's five, six. Before Norway discovered oil in the 1960s, it was one of Europe's poorest countries. But as it got rich quick, the old baking became unfashionable, and in Bergen today, only a few remain. The main bakeries are owned by the supermarket chains. Our future will be to be better than uh, the supermarket uh, chains. Yeah. To be more individual rather than yeah. just bringing in the mass yeah. products. You're making individual things. Yeah. Do people at home bake? Yeah. Or do they do bake? They do bake. Oh. I suppose they have to. They like to bake also because of this good smell and freshness and for the kids. So it's popular to bake at home. I've just touched down in LA, the movie and entertainment capital of America. Tinseltown. Over 350,000 people are employed in the showbiz industry here in one way or another. You do sort of feel you're in the heart of something special, something glamorous. In fact, next, I'm heading northeast to trendy Pasadena, because somewhere around here is a bakery whose purple cakes have created a social media storm. It's Cafe 86, and I'm here to see the owner, Ginger. Hello. Hi. Yes, you're Ginger. Ginger. Nice to meet you. How are nice you doing? to meet you, Paul. Ginger's uniquely colourful bakes have become Instagram celebrities. This is our most popular item. The star of the show being the creme caramel topped ube cupcake. So people come for miles just to come and photograph this thing. They do. But why is it all purple? Well, we're Filipino. Yeah. So growing up, everything we ate for dessert would have something purple in it, and it's called ube. 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 It's a purple yam. Back home, we make a jam out of it, eat it with a spoon. But we live in America now, so we kind of have to Americanize the ube to make it. Tell, tell me what Americanizing is. Americanizing it makes it into a cupcake. OK. I so... make it into a pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger may have ubeed LA with their purple bakes, but I've never come across this stuff before. Okay. You ready to meet ube? Is this it? Yeah. So what's the raw ingredient then? Ah. It looks, it gnarly. looks very pretty. Yeah, it is. And it is? It smells like a potato. Yeah, it smells like a potato. That is crazy. It's got a lot of, I'll say, white chocolate, coconut vanilla hints in the flavor. What we normally do is we roast it in the oven yeah. and you would grate it. This is the grated ube, 
with a little tin of evaporated milk and condensed milk, which is how we traditionally make the jam. Actually, it's quite nice. Yeah. It's a bit like a mousse. Yeah, okay, so let's not call it a jam. No, you can't call that, you can't call that a jam. <laughs> but Ginger wants to show me how she makes ube truffles, starting with the base of leftover ube sponge. We put oh, it in... the colour of that? Is that a sponge? That's a sponge. <laughs> we bring it in here. We made some coconut cream cheese frosting. Yeah. So you put enough there just to get the cake into the consistency, just to bind it together and make it really, really fudgy. Roll them into balls. Purple balls. Delicious purple balls. That's what they are. Dip them in white chocolate and Oreos. Yeah. They have your chocolate balls. It looks incredible. Yeah. That's nice, sir. That's nice, right? Mm, it is. Yeah. I'm happy to report Ginger's purple bakes are just a pretty picture. It's been an absolute pleasure, Ginger. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. Love it. I think Ginger's a great character. And the fact that she's managed to master baking with the ube is incredible. I'm in San Francisco for my very first time. That is pretty cool. It's 8 a.m. and I'm heading to a bakery that has people queuing around the block for just one of its bakes. You've heard of the crow nut? Say hello to the croffin. I'm intrigued, but is it a great bake or just a gimmick? Good morning. Hi. Bridget, the manager here at Mr. Holmes Bakehouse, is letting me in on the secret. Is it part croissant, part muffin? Yeah, it is. So it's croissant dough that's baked in a muffin tin. So it has the shape of a muffin. So it doesn't taste like a muffin? No. It's just a croissant in a tin? Croissant, yeah. Bridget is keeping the recipe under wraps, but apparently the dough takes three days to make. It's shaped into muffin tins for its final proof, gets baked, cooled, covered in sugar, and filled with creme pat. <laughs> so, uh, every day they have a different filling. Today is matcha. It's our most popular flavor. Matcha tea. So yeah, you've got the flavor tea. of the matcha tea going through it. Wow, okay. It's fascinating. It's clever. <laughs> it's flaky, it's buttery, and it does actually taste quite nice. Although the bakery opens at 7 a.m. for general pastry sales, the cruffins don't come out till nine, and the sales are restricted to two per person. That's a great ploy. All for a cruffin? I wouldn't queue up for anything <laughs> for half an hour. Time for me to get my hands on and help put this lot out of their misery. OK, guys, start coming in. Hello. How many cruffins are we doing today? Two. Thank you very much. Hi. How many cruffins are we doing today? Uh, but what's Two, obvious okay. is these guys aren't just here to eat cruffins. Are you taking a picture with a cruffin? Yes. Why? Yeah, because... <laughs> why, you, why, why do you want a picture of that? I don't know. I, I guess because uh, everyone else has a picture right. of it. That's what it is, isn't it? That's yeah. what it is, because yeah. everyone else has got one. This is mad, isn't it? I can't knock it, though especially as we're in the motherland of computer tech and social media. Instagram, Google, Facebook and Apple are all San Fran Bay innovations. So it seems right that the city has a baking internet hit all of its own. In for a penny, in for a pound. At the end of the day, no matter how cool or trend-setting it is, anyone getting people excited about bakes and baking is no bad thing in my book. It's fascinating. It's all about the internet. It's all about that feeling of we're getting something special, we're getting something that no one's going to get. And that, I think, is fascinating to see. I'd be selling tea and coffee up the line as well, making a few quid. For sun, sea, and some seriously jaw-dropping scenery, Cape Town is hard to top. It's where the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans meet, and cities don't come with much better backdrops. There. Look at the colour of that bakery. 
Does that represent the Rainbow Nation? It could do. In fact, this is my first bakery, where I've enlisted the help of one of South Africa's most popular celebrity chefs, Siba Mtongana. She's got her own show on the Food Network and is also a foodie TV judge. Sound familiar? I've come to meet her in District 6, a suburb just outside the city centre. Hello. Hello, Sipa. How are you? Hello. You're right. How are you? Uh, nice yeah. to see you. You're nice right. to see you. What is it about Cape Town and baking? Food and baking is a thing. Specifically with baking, I mean baking, you would know, has just taken the world by storm and we are right in there. Sibo wants to kick things off here at Charlie's, a bakery that takes the Rainbow Nation slogan literally and celebrates modern South Africa in uber colourful bakes. I absolutely love it. It is vibrant, it is for the young, for the old. It literally has changed the landscape. It's the brainchild of husband and wife team Charlie and Jackie Beese. Charlie, sadly, is no longer with us, but it's still very much a family affair. Daughter Daniela works here too. You can see the variety of colours of the cakes. Most definitely. Charlie trained as a master baker in Germany bringing traditional cake-making skills, whilst Jackie's injected the colour and the fun. I came in with the crazy. No experience whatsoever in baking or decorating, except what Charlie had taught me. I need to try one of these, actually. Let's try one. I love the Amarula Ultimate Chocolate. It looks Simply great. because Amarula is such a popular liqueur that we're known for. So yeah. I'm going to have a slice of that, please. It might be packed with chocolate and South African booze, but it's the goal that makes it unmissable. That's a big slice of cake, isn't it? <laughs> we can share one. <laughs> wow. It's a beautifully soft, moist cake that does melt in the mouth. And actually, the ganache on the outside is delicious. The amarula comes through. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's a great cake. Do you like the gold? I do like the gold. <laughs> It's very blingy. It's very blingy. Yeah. <laughs> Eye-catching. <laughs> Sipa's next choice of cake has even more going on than the last. It's a carrot, banana, pineapple and mango cake. It's yes. got a layer of mango in the middle and it's got a cream cheese icing. Yes, please. Can I try a slice of that? <laughs> Thank you. You go first. Wow. More like a carrot cake consistency. Mm. It's a rich cream cheese on the top. It's like silk. Delicious. It's a carrot cake on steroids. <laughs> this is very traditional to Cape Town. Uh, now, this is the thing with Cape Town. We look at influence with what's happening in the world, mm. and we take it in, we make it our own, and we just give it some steroids, as you said. Yeah. Or we take it to the next level. Taking their bakes to another level seems to be rather a theme here, even with a classic chocolate fudge brownie. You get a slice like this, which gets smothered in even more chocolate. Dear me. That's ridiculous. For one almighty indulgent bake. Yeah. That's chocolate here, right? And this place isn't just an assault on the taste buds, but on the eyes too. I've never seen piping this colourful. For Jackie's team, anything and everything goes, and it's all done at breakneck speed. Time to unleash my arty side. I haven't played for ages. Oh, no, see? Why don't you teach Paul a tip of starting and stopping? We start touching down and then we lift quite high up and allow it to fall. Yeah. OK. Woohoo! Go, Paul! So now I'm going to give you more colour. Yes. More some red. Yeah, I need, I need red. more colour now, don't I? It's a red. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we can auction it off for charity later today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I need? See, my glasses. You get in Are they really the strong? strong? We can do. Oh, that's better. I bet you've never seen me so quiet. 
<laughs> Let me element. I got into my art mode again. It's great. I could be here for hours. I'm no expert at piping, but I love doing them. These guys are experts. 